just pulled up into Dr. Leo's bee yard. And what we're gonna do right now is go over how you guys can save a ton of money raising bees, <laughs> providing uh, pollination for your homestead, honey for your pantry, and just good environment for all of us to live in. Dr. Leo's getting ready, putting his stuff together, and we're gonna walk you through some stuff and more education. Golly, who would ever thought you could learn all this stuff just by watching YouTube? All right, let's go, we're gonna talk about bees. Can't believe it, I came all the way down from up north and I'm down here freezing. I brought the wrong jacket, it snowed on me this morning. What's going on down here? I thought the Ozarks were supposed to be warmer. Yeah, they are, but uh, welcome to the Ozarks. <laughs> Until I showed up. Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. So we're in uh, bee apiary. It's kind of a tongue twister. It is. <laughs> you all right? Stay with me now. Yeah. All right, go on. Do we do it again? Do you want to do it again? I thought yeah, we were yeah. doing fine. Okay. Well, here we are with Dr. Leo. We're in his bee apiary down here in the Ozarks. I'm Dr. Leo. My website, horizontalhive.com, shows you how you can get started with beekeeping in minimal expense and doing it all naturally. Yeah. So that's what we'll talk about in this video. Yeah. This is springtime and many people are thinking about getting into beekeeping and having a couple of hives in their backyard to have good honey for themselves and their children. Uh, this is how we started keeping bees here on our homestead um, in tw 2008. So 14 years ago after getting this land. And this tree in the background is where everything started. Uh, if you want to get bees, you really have two options. One is to get a package of bees, which are the commercial domesticated variety, which is not really winter hardy where you live and has very little disease resistance. But a much better alternative is to uh, catch a swarm of local wild bees using a very simple uh, box that's called a bait hive or a swamp trap. So when we moved here, we put one of these boxes on this big oak tree that takes two people to hug. And uh, um, this is where we caught our very first swarm and we went from zero hives to 40 hives without buying any bees. One of the reasons it's better to catch your own bees is not just the lack of expense, but the bees that come in a swarm from the local wilderness uh, will be locally adapted, acclimated to your local conditions, will have much better disease resistance than the commercial strains. So what I recommend, and you can get the free plans and free advice on that from horizontalhive.com, is you take a box. This is the one I uh, built. The plans are horizontalhive.com or uh, you can purchase one there and this is that you put in the spring in the tree to catch your swarm of bees. I'd like to show you how to set up uh, the swamp trap and how to position it for best results. Um, the box needs to be the right volume. The bees really avoid very small cavities. When uh, they become congested and they bee tree in the woods or even a wild colony living in the city somewhere in the wall of a building, a swarm, that means the queen and half of all of the workers, fly out and scouts move in all directions looking for a place to live. If they find your box that looks like to them like a, a cavity in a tree, the swarm will very likely move in. So the volume needs to be right because when the scouts come and they go inside and they see it's too small or too big, they will not accept it. The ideal volume is 10 gallons or so. So this box with the plans on horizontalhive.com is exactly the size that the bees prefer. Inside there you have the same kind of frames you have in your horizontal hives. I use the Layens hive frames, Layens, and there, uh, some of them will have sheets of wax um, that the bees will start building honeycomb on. Um, if you already have some old frames that have starter strips where maybe you harvested honey and removed this honey uh, and left a little bit of this comb on top, the starter strip is totally fine and they will build from there. But if you are just starting, you can put foundation wax there like this. Um, also, you take two tubes, they're called slow release tubes, and you fill them with lemongrass oil and you tie them to that frame that is closest to the entrance. Uh, these supplies are available on horizontalhive.com and this smell of lemongrass that's released at the right concentration from these tubes going through the plastic wall of the tube 
is uh, sending the bees another signal that this is a great cavity for that swarm. So you just put all of these frames, and of course the swarm doesn't need the frames, but you do. If they were to move into an empty box, they would start building this honeycomb there right away, and then transferring them to a permanent hive would be much more difficult. But when I catch a swarm, transferring them with these frames from this little box into the permanent hive will be as easy as opening the slit, lifting the frame with honeycomb and all of the bees and lowering it into the permanent hive. So I put these frames here, the lemongrass in slow release tubes. And now before I set it on the tree, it's very important to secure the lid there very tightly. What I do, I just put uh, four screws in there. Uh, not only so the wind doesn't blow it or squirrels don't detach it, but more importantly, this is for safety. If you're carrying down a box full of honeybees from the tree on an, an extension ladder, and then you drop the box, the bees will not appreciate it, but at least if the lid is solidly attached, uh, they will not come out and start stinging you and everyone who happens to be around. So I just take uh, a few screws and I attach this top to the uh, box with uh, small screws to hold it in place. And trust me, you don't want to be bringing down a box full of <laughs> swarming bees <laughs> and drop them. So you definitely want to probably screw that lid down. Some guys put ratchet straps, straps around yeah, it Yeah, that's too. another good option. Yeah. And you know, I've handled hundreds of swarm traps and I only dropped it once. Yeah, that's all it takes. <laughs> but I, was, I was glad the lid was securely on. <laughs> all right, so now that you have that box ready, um, Let's talk about where to position it. And there, imagine yourself a honeybee and you're looking for a place to live. Um, they will be looking for it in the trees, right? Because that's where the bees live. And research showed that uh, if you put this box down on the ground, your chances of catching a swarm will be much lower than if you elevate 10 or 15 feet up in the tree. The bees prefer to be in the tree um, even for the protection from predators. Um, so we'll take the extension ladder and put it on this big oak tree that caught me the first swarm I ever had and also keeps catching me swarms every, almost every summer. Another consideration is that the tree needs to be big and conspicuous and easy for the scout bees to find. So the bees on the edge, we have the power line running there. So it's on the edge of vegetation is much easier for the scouts to find than the same kind of tree that's in the middle of the woods. Follow all the safety rules when working with ladders. If you're not comfortable climbing up the ladder with that box under your arm, you can tie a rope around the box, throw the rope over a branch and pull it like on the pulley uh, instead of carrying it with you. Just make sure there is good footing, it's not too soft and it'll, uh, but the leather is not going to start walking, so make sure you can good support. Sure that there is good support, the ground is not too soft, that there are no sharp pro uh, objects protruding here, uh, like teapots or old fencing, and that everything feels solid before you actually start climbing up. In terms of attachment of the swamp trap to the tree, you have two options, rachel straps or a piece of wire that runs around the swamp trap with a nail in the tree and you hang it on the wire like a painting. You could also tie that rope around there and then climb up there and just take the rope with you and then sh -sh 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 pull it on up. So, yeah. Lots of ways to skin a cat. He's going up. Yeah. So uh, one option is having this wire and you take a really really big uh, uh, screw like three and a half or four inch screw you'll drive it into the tree and then you have this loop on this wire and you will hang it on the loop like that and then secure it additionally with one swarm trap uh, with one uh, ratchet strap but i have ratchet straps in place in the tree from the previous year because i hang swarm traps on this tree every year 
and it's a good practice if you catch a swarm stick to this like a tree because it can catch your swarms not only the following year but even sometimes more than one swarm in the very same year so for this reason i have the ratchet straps already up there i don't need this piece of wire i'll just put it straight up there in place without driving a nail into the tree Both Doug and me are up in the tree, 15 feet off the ground, and this is the ideal height to hang your swamp trap. The orientation of the entrance doesn't make much difference, so you can position it to whatever is convenient for you. Uh, it's preferable that the box is in full shade, so it doesn't overheat. Bees will not move into a box that feels too stuffy and too hot inside. It's very important, too, that you carry a small level and you actually check whether it's plumb because if you have this frame that I showed that only has a strip of starter comb or a strip of wax foundation in the top the bees will start building it down according to gravity and if uh, your box is out of plumb like that on the tree not only the bees will interconnect several frames together you won't be able to pull them out but also rainwater will be running down and into the entrance so just make sure that this box will be positioned plumb and then you are ready to attach it to this tree with uh, these ratchet straps so it will be like that if you need to put uh, something like a block of wood or a branch between the swamp trap and the tree to make it plumb do it now and just run the ratchet strap around it and fasten it You to use two ratchet straps because the tree keeps moving in the wind and sometimes one of the ratchet straps may fail and bust so you don't want this box falling down on the ground especially with the bees inside so always use two forms of attachment so there we go this is the first very simple and very important step in getting your bees instead of spending the money on something that's not even viable uh, you use a simple piece of equipment that will last you 20 or 30 years to get the locally adapted robust disease-free bees you know he's talking about how those bees are adaptive they're almost like heirloom bees right because you guys get the seeds and then you grow and then you save the seeds and then it adapts to your environment and then year after year it happens and then that's the best seed is the heirloom seeds just like the bees you don't want to be bring bees from california over to wisconsin and then think they're going to do great through the first winter or two they're going to die on you they're going to be sickly you're not going to get the production so you just got to keep all that stuff in mind, right? Just heirloom bees. Now we're in uh, Dr. Leo's little bee yard right here. And we'll show you some of the beehives that he has. And we're going to, well, I'll just show you. That's the Italian beehive. Don't mess with them. That's the Italian bees. And all of these designs are also functional. They're not just pretty. It helps bees orient to their um, hive. If all of the hives are identical, some of the bees from one hive may go to another hive by mistake, and this is what spreads disease. But when you put beautiful fancy pictures on the hive, they know for sure that it is their hive, there is less drifting of the bees and less spread of disease. Yeah, that's what we talked about one time, is why you don't leave all your hives white. But every time you guys see hives, they're always white. <laughs> just uh, the um, uh, mouse guard that I haven't removed yet from the winter as we talked about it's important to protect the boxes from uh, um, mice in the winter it can be a piece of wire stapled to the entrance um, 
and there I don't put too many mm, hives in the same spot there are probably around 10 hives here um, and I spread them as much as practical for you uh, to give bees opportunity to return to the right hive with no mistake again it's very important for staying healthy for the bees but also don't put all of the uh, eggs in the same basket if you have a larger number of hives uh, I now have around 40 um, if they were all in the same spot and you had some kind of contagious disease that can happen even to wild disease resistant stock then uh, you don't want it to spread to all of the hives so now I have hives in six different locations just spreading them in smaller apiaries which makes for more driving but it also contributes to the much better health of the bee colonies and all of these boxes are well insulated there is one and a half inch of natural wool inside and uh, uh, it's beginning of April and it was 75 degrees two days ago but today it's freezing cold it was snowing in the morning so when you have good protection in the walls you don't have to worry about bees are being too hot in the summer or too cold in the winter or suffering from from these wild fluctuations of temperature in the summer uh, in the springtime that's what happens a lot of the bees you know get 70 degrees real quick and they start separating and then doing their thing and then that night it could drop that fast and because they're separated they get cold and then they might not make it so yeah. having the wool in there is good at uh, help for them. Recognize uh, that hive uh, if you've been watching uh, Doug and Stacy's bee videos but no way not in Doug's bee yard I gave them uh, uh, one of these panels that my family painted uh, instead of now painting on the wall of the hive as we used to do we now paint it on a piece of paper and uh, uh, scan it this way we can print it on a piece of aluminum it's very long lasting and after 10 or 15 years when this eventually starts fading in the weather and exposed to sunshine you can replace it again without losing this artwork forever Go ahead. a very important point when you catch a swarm and it's easier than you think it is then uh, you have to remove the box from the tree and put it where the permanent high will be and you cannot move the bees too far because they have a good memory of where the box was there in the tree once they moved in as a swarm so if you take it up from the tree and you put it here they will find it but if you were to move this box even 20 feet or 30 way, feet away hoping to put them in one of these other hives in the apiary all of the foraging bees would be returning back to the original spot and getting completely disoriented and lost so you have two options either take it down from the tree and put it in a permanent hive right under the tree or you need to take them a couple of miles away and put it there if you want to move them from here um, to a hive that's a hundred yards away you need to take them out three miles for a week let them forage there for a week and then bring them and put them into the permanent spot again the idea is for them to not remember the original placement of the trap on the tree and keep coming there getting lost yeah you can try it yeah this guy was populated with a swarm and see how robust they are it's 46 degrees and bees normally do not fly and um, in temperatures lower than 55 degrees but these uh, northern bees do not care yeah. what you guys got to do is like me and Gary are doing Gary's got a swarm trap at his house and I'm gonna have a swarm trap at my house and then he's gonna catch one and I'm gonna catch one and then we're gonna switch because we live so far away from each other all right so we had to come inside it's just so cold out there even those bees were moving around but I'm like let's get inside yeah, yeah. so dr. Leo was uh, explaining to me about his big you know vision right uh, because like myself and Stacy he's an educator and that's what we really like to do is we like to you know educate people teach them about uh, a thing you know a subject and then hopefully that that's going to help move them you know closer to their goals you know closer to being self-sufficient closer to living off the land you know those are our goals and that's why we work so well together is because we're focused on the same kind of things so what we're inside of right now is well here dr leo will tell you Oh yeah, our neighbors were moving uh, back to town. Uh, you know those neighbors we talked about in that other video? Yeah, the ones that <laughs> dumping sewer into our crack. 
creek. So now we did install the proper um, septic system in place. And now I don't have any of these bad <laughs> terrible things happening anymore. But their uh, home where transforming into a learning center. It will be School of Natural Beekeeping. So this room, uh, pardon the mess, it's all work in progress, but almost done. Uh, this is where the lectures will be held. And then we'll be able to walk outside and work with the beehives and uh, soak in all of the beauty of the Ozarks with this stream and all of these big trees that we never cut down right here in one spot. So uh, to, tomorrow Doug is attending the two-day workshop that I teach in town. We rent the room there and then we come to my apiary for the practical hands-on experience. But starting the fall of 2022, after this renovation is complete, these workshops will be taught right here at our bee farm with all of the bees and the trees and the streams around us and the lectures happening within a few steps of where the bees are buzzing. And if you're guys like us, I mean, that's kind of some big news. So let's leave a big comment down there. Congratulations, Dr. Leo, on your learning center. You guys know we're getting a learning center put together too, and we'll be working on our classes. And you'll probably see Dr. Leo even up at our place hosting the class and everything. Yeah, that's so. the plan for the fall of 2022 too. Yeah. So that's just the, we have Heart of Teachers, and we're just trying to share with you guys all this knowledge. Make sure you guys check out HorizontalHive.com, and you can get free plans if you want to build a Horizontal Hive. You can get free plans if you want to build a swarm trap box. If you have no time to do those, you can actually buy them and they ship them to you anywhere in the U.S. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you know, even if you buy it, the cost of the swamp trap with frames and all ready to go is just $99 plus shipping. Yep. If you are to buy bees, it would be $200 just for the bees with no equipment. So with a very small upfront investment, you are getting into natural beekeeping in a sustainable way, supporting the local strain of bees and also without breaking the budget. You know what's happening too? If you buy non-local bees, say you live in Wisconsin and you buy a package of bees from Georgia, <laughs> these bees live in your hive in Wisconsin and they produce uh, drones, the male bees, mm -hmm. and the honeybees mate outside of the hive. So all of these Georgia drones flying out of your hives in Wisconsin are mating and impregnating local queens in Wisconsin uh, destroying their adaptation because their progeny will no longer be Wisconsin bees. This will be a mix between Wisconsin bees and Georgia bees. So they won't be as uh, disease resistant or winter hardy as the mother colony was. So please understand that um, if you buy non-local bees, not only you will not enjoy beekeeping because you will have to medicate them to even keep them alive, but also you would be undermining the health of the local honeybee population. And if you'd like to learn more about these natural methods and swarm catching, there is a lot of resource on horizontalhive.com and also in the two wonderful books that I translated and published for you. One is Keeping Bees with a Smile, this big bestseller on how to get started in keeping bees naturally and horizontal hives. And the other one is the classical French book specifically on keeping bees in the horizontal hives where instead of building up one box at a time that's very disruptive for the bees and very hard on your back with all of this heavy lifting, you put bees in a box like you saw in the apiary a minute ago um, and there the bees do the rest. Yeah, you don't have to lift all those boxes around. We started off going up and now we're going horizontal and it's been a lot easier. So. If you guys got any questions, we always comb the comments to see if you, comb the comments, did you pick that up? To see if you guys have uh, any questions that we can answer for you guys. And also check out HorizontalHive.com. You can attend one of his classes in person. He's got uh, several more this year. And then you can also see him at Homesteading Life Conference in Hannibal, Missouri. We host that every year, Stacy and I, um, in August. So we hope to see you there too. So yeah, a lot of enough. information in this video. So hopefully yeah. you guys got a lot of, uh, got your pencil out and you guys are taking notes. True, and you know, I wanted to tell you that uh, keeping bees is simpler than growing tomatoes or potatoes. <laughs> because is. with vegetables, you need to plant them and protect them from groundhogs and uh, rabbits and yeah. deer, and you need to water them and cover them if it gets too hot or too cold. Uh, with the bees, if you start with the local bees, you put them in the box and you just open the box a few times a year yeah. to give them the frames and then pull the frames full of honey. Seriously, that can be as simple as that if you start with the local bees. 
So check out horizontal5.com and these two books are, yeah. and you can get started this very season. Yep, yeah, and they're easy keepers. All right, you guys, smash the thumbs up on the way out. We'll see you on the next video.